if we go to rock and roll. Oh, see Mr. Dempsey there. Good morning. Good morning. I'm on my phone at a car dealership getting an oil change. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love it. You know, whatever it takes, get it in. Yeah, I'm in the middle of a lacrosse tournament, so I snuck yeah. out and decided to get some. So I thought you had, a, thought you had a, a tournament today. Coach Hurry yeah. see Funk there. There we go. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right, we're going to give a few minutes uh, just here for for people to hop on, especially ADs, because the baseball the baseball uh, seating meeting is just finishing up. So as we have some folks still trickling in here. Hey, Phil, can you hear me? Julie, Julie's here too. There she is. Okay. Did you get my call this morning, Julie? We're all good. I just wanted to double check something with you. Oh, uh, what we talked about yesterday? Uh, no. Okay. No, nope, you're all good. Okay. All right, the time is 10.02. We're going to give one more minute here. Uh, I want to be respectful of everyone's time on the Saturday morning, but I do want to get everyone over here as possible from baseball. So, okay. Matt, you going to be down there all day in Shakopee? Yes, I will. All right. All right. I'll, see, I'll see you this afternoon. All right, gang. Here we go. Randy, are we good to go? Right to the waiting room clear? Yep, we're good. Awesome. All right. It is, it's uh, 10.03 now. I've given a few extra minutes for people to kick over from so baseball. I'm going to do a high school league meeting real quick for the state lacrosse tournament. Real quick, can you can I have anyone mute that's not uh, talking right now? And thank you very much, gang. All right, we're gonna get going here. This is gonna be fast and furious. We're gonna touch on a few things that uh, are are pertinent to your success and this event's success. Uh, we're gonna run through introducing some folks. We're gonna run through some participation stuff. We'll, I'll get to the agenda here in a second. But first and foremost, I want to say one thank you for being here on a, uh, a Saturday morning. It's absolutely beautiful outside and there's a million other things going on. So I appreciate you making that priority uh, as ADs and coaches. And then secondly, I'd like to say a huge congratulations for getting here uh, and getting to the point where we're even in this meeting. So uh, we are very excited to host the, the state tournament for boys and girls lacrosse next week on the 13th, 15th and 17th at Stillwater and White Bear. Uh, and it is a huge accomplishment to get here. And so very excited for all of you, very excited for your programs. Uh, and we've got a great host of staff here that are going to relay some information and uh, talk a little bit about how we make this event the best event possible for your communities, not just your student athletes, not just you as coaches or ADs, but your entire communities here. Randy, let's go ahead and kick forward here, please. All right, so let me introduce a little bit of our tournament management team here that we've got. Uh, our tournament manager for boys and girls lacrosse is Jim Muckenhern. Many, most of you know uh, Muck. He has been very involved in MSHSL state tournaments uh, from boys and girls lacrosse, adapted sports across the board. Uh, and, and Jim's done a fine job in, in teaching Randy and I, who are, are novice at best at understanding lacrosse, uh, some of the ins and the outs of, of running this tournament. So Jim Muckenhern uh, is the go-to on the tournament manager. He will be at the White Bear site. Uh, from our officiating staff standpoint, obviously we've got Jason Nickleby, the same usual sucks, but suspects here. Jason Nickleby, Julie Carlson, on the girl side, Matt Dempsey on the boy side. Um, they will be moving between the sites as uh, those sites host their respective boys and girls uh, tournaments. So uh, thank you for being here, Matt and Julie. We already saw, heard from you guys a little bit earlier here as we were saying hi. Um, let's hop into our sites here a little bit. Our site manager at uh, the Stillwater site is Athletic Direct Activities Director Ricky Michael. Uh, and the day that he'll be over at baseball, Jackie uh, Delahunt will be there. 
Uh, she, uh, they are both veterans at hosting the state tournament uh, for boys and girls lacrosse and have done a fine job doing so. So thank you for having us back at Stillwater and thank you for your participation uh, in the state tournament. On the white bear side of things, we've got Adrian Turner. Uh, Adrian Turner, first time hosting lacrosse at, uh, at the state tournament level at White Bear Lake High School. We'll be at the South Campus and we'll get into that a little bit. Adrian, thank you for, for uh, taking on the responsibility and the privilege and maybe the burden of sometimes on hosting the state tournament. So we're excited to be at White Bear. We're excited for you. We've, we've had a great experience so far. And I know that our, our communities, our kids and, and uh, parents and spectators will as well. Um, hop into a little bit of the MSHSL staff. Here present today, we've got Laura McIntoon, who was going to touch on some website and media stuff. Uh, uh, Randy Hill, who is kind of the boss of this whole operation as the support staff for uh, Boys and Girls Lacrosse. And then I've got myself here, obviously, as the tournament director. My name is Phil Archer. I've had the privilege of meeting a lot of you um, through other tournaments or the Boys and Girls Lacrosse Tournament last year, which is kind of my first experience uh, as coming on in June here. Been just hitting the one-year mark, uh, but I am the tournament director. And um, a lot more than just running the tournament, also trying to help find ways to engage your coaches association, help create a proper coaches advisory, do different things to help encourage the growth of boys and girls lacrosse in the state of Minnesota. So um, th this is our tournament management team. Uh, everyone's got their cameras on, so you can um, put a, a face with the name uh, if we're on site. Don't hesitate to come up to us, ask questions, talk, engage, uh, and talk about lacrosse and how we make it better. Uh, the one person that's not here today because he's a little tied up with baseball is Tim Layton. On the media side of things, he will be floating around from site to site when we hop into our tournament next week. So just know that. Many of you are familiar with Tim. If there's any questions centered around media, what's allowed, what's not allowed, uh, maybe sending a local reporter or something like that, those all have to go through Tim Layton's office. And we'll touch on that a little bit here between Laura and I. We'll cover it. Go ahead, Randy. Awesome. So let's pop into our agenda real quick here. So uh, obviously, I already said congratulations. I want to take a second and, and just say congrats and a special congrats to any first time qualifiers to the state tournament. It's a it's a big deal. Lacrosse still is a relatively young sport in the guise of the MSHSL scope. Uh, and so for many of you team, many of teams that have not been to the state tournament before, congratulations. Welcome to the state tournament. And it's another level and we're excited to host it. All right. So as I said, we're going to touch on website and media a little bit. We'll pass that over to Laura for that. We're going to talk a little bit about expectations and hit on some points in the participation guide, which all of you have received. And then we're going to talk a little bit about logistics of uh, each site. Uh, and the reason we're going to talk about logistics is obvious for team getting in and navigating, spectators getting in and navigating, and then finally for you athletic administrators out there to make sure that we're all on the same page as far as when it comes to spectator conduct um, and making sure that we've all got the best experience possible there as well before we hop into the actual seating and, and throwing out the schedule in brackets. Randy? So I'm going to take a quick second here and or introduce Laura uh, to the mix here. Now, Laura runs everything, website and IT at our office, uh, meaning that she has her hands involved in just about every aspect of the business at this point. And so um, there's no better person to, to start to run through some of the different aspects of the of of tapping into your resources, making sure you're understanding what you have so you can answer your own questions first and foremost and help out your community and your coaches if you need that as well. So Laura, thank you for being here. If you wouldn't mind taking it over, it's all you. Great, thanks Phil and good morning and congratulations everyone on a state tournament experience. The slide that you're looking at right now guides you to finding information and resources for coaches and ADs. This is on your dashboard after you've logged in so way over on the right-hand side where that black arrow points to state tournament resources, my example here is golf, and obviously we're talking lacrosse, but that is where Randy, Phil, and others in our office are putting resources for the state tournament experience. They may come to you in an email also, but our goal in our office is to put everything in one place so when you need information, you can find it. And that state tournament resources band is that spot where you should be able to go and find everything you need to prepare for your state tournament experience as a coach or an AD. So walking back just a little bit to get to that spot, if you move over to the left-hand side of the slide, the number one um, gold circle there, 
on your AD or coach dashboard, you have a large blue button that says sport and activity information and a smaller button on there that says sports and activities. When you click on that sports and activities button, you'll see one or more of those blue bands like number two shows. The one here is golf comma girls. You are obviously looking for lacrosse comma girls or lacrosse comma boys. Clicking the little plus on the far right hand side of that opens up that number three window. And again, that is the place where our office aims to put all of the resources pertaining to a given sport or activity. There are year long resources, there will be section resources in the middle, and then state tournament resources. Really focusing right now on that state tournament resources. The slides from today will go there at the end of this meeting. The recording from today will go there. And again, all of the resources that Phil and or Randy talk about today, that is the spot where you will find all of those. This again, reminder is for coaches and ADs. So this is on your dashboard after you've logged in. The next slide shares resources that we provide for the general public. So this is without logging into anything on the website, if you go up under sports and activities and go to either lacrosse girls or lacrosse boys, on that page, you'll find all of the information about that sport. Focusing today on those blue state tournament information buttons, which you see on the right-hand side of that screenshot, there are a number of buttons that get filled as we move toward the state tournament and additional ones will continue to be added. Things you can find there, for example, a schedule. Usually that's kind of a one-page schedule of times, dates, and locations. We also prepare a spectator guide. ADs, we know that many of you, this is something that you find helpful to share with your fans and communities. It's kind of that one-page printable information of everything state tournament related. Feel free to use that and or ADs use it and adjust it a bit to make it fit your community. This where you can find a link to apparel, the streaming links will be placed here, brackets are linked here, the online program will be linked here. So really sending your communities to this page for either girls and or boys really should give them everything they need to prepare for that state tournament, either being on site and or being off site to attend that. Couple specifics on some of the things on that page. If we can move ahead a slide, please. Tickets. Um, tickets should all be purchased online. I'm um, having just spent two days at the state track and field meet. Um, when people purchase their tickets online ahead of time, it facilitates a really quick entry into the venue. When folks haven't purchased those tickets online, and end up doing that at the site, trying to figure out where to log in, how to get that done, it slows down the line. Um, the number of thank yous we got from people on online ticketing on how quickly they got into the venue at State Track and Field um, was really good. Ticket prices are $13 for adults, $8 for students. That is a daily ticket. It does provide in and out privileges and those folks will pick up a wristband on their way out of the stadium if they want to re-enter. And that does include going from site to site on Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday. So if folks wanted to attend all three days, they would buy three tickets. But again, day to day, they could go back and forth between sites. Using Hometown Ticketing, who is our vendor for this, um, does provide a lot of options for folks on how to present those tickets at the gate. Um, they can print those out from the PDF. And again, for some folks, that is a great solution. They have that printed ticket in their hand. They feel good and confident about coming to the site with that. Um, many folks choose to show those on their smartphone. They'll open up the PDF that they got emailed to them. There is also a hometown fan app. Some of you whose schools use hometown, your folks are very familiar with that app and it's a great way to store that. And again, they can also be put into an Apple or Google wallet. So lots of options there. We saw all of them at track. Um, really probably the first two is where most folks were. We had a lot show up with that printed ticket. And again, they just felt confident in that. 
you will also receive from our office four complimentary tickets for each day and site. Those will be emailed to the AD at your school. They will come as a number of emails, one per ticket. ADs, those are the tickets that you should distribute to others who are coming to assist and or provide that supervision for your fans and spectators. Um, ADs, many times you'll print those four and hand those out to the folks. Again, they can also be forwarded via an email, et cetera. Other things to know and think about, um, we can jump ahead a slide. Um, all of our games for the state lacrosse tournament will be streamed. NSPN is the streaming partner of the state high school league and state tournaments. NSPN is the company that was formerly known as School Space Media. So if you're not familiar with their new name, that is just their new name, same company. They do require a subscription. I believe the price point for that subscription right now is $6.99 a month. So a pretty good price for those people to a person do want to stream. They can do a monthly subscription and see all of the lacrosse games that will be broadcast. Additional information. I think we're going to talk um, apparel, oh, media. So, um, hey, Laura, Phil Laura, alluded, sorry, Laura, bit. can I ask a quick, quick question here? So, sure. are you saying that uh, if we wanted to get film, you know, of our officials working here, we're going to have to pay the monthly fee? For officials? Yeah, for the uh, assigners. Julie, we can take care of that later. That, Jason, that, that's no, a working piece Jason between works Jason with and myself. That's not really in, in pertinent to this, this meeting. Okay. Thank you. Media, and again, Phil alluded to this a little bit before. This is really not in your lane, but often you get these questions and it's great to be able to point folks in the right way. Working media, um, professional press must apply for a credential with the league and be approved for that. They can find that information underneath who are you and media. And again, please refer them to that. You may have some folks who have covered your teams all year and they come to you to say, what do I need to know? Please direct them to Oriental Learning Student Media Program. This is intended to be for students who are interested in a broadcast journalism media type career. And it provides them with that exceptional spot on your roster for others to come in to the game or the event. Um, those folks, the student media do apply through the AD the same way that professional media do. And they are really there again to act as a professional media member. They cannot be in um, on sidelines. They cannot be in locker rooms. All of the same things apply to them that apply to media. They can, however, be in photo zones and they can be conducting post-game interviews. So things again that media do have an opportunity to do the same piece. Um, that information is also under media on the website. Photography for fans and spectators can be done from the seating area. It should be done with a, a, a what I would call a recreational camera. Those folks are not allowed to use um, large multi-lens cameras, et cetera. And they also do not have access to the field and or to photo zones. And a few things about apparel, I think, are next. Or do we have those tucked later, Phil? Nope, these are next. Yep. So apparel, I'm going to turn it to Phil to talk lacrosse apparel. For those of you that have been in other state tournaments, is being managed a little bit differently. So I encourage you to check this out, and Phil will give you the details on this. Sweet. Good deal. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. And um, we did get a little bit of like choppiness or breaking up. So just a reminder that uh, two things. One, this is going to be recorded and placed in that area that Laura just talked about. And then two, if there are any questions or anything, because maybe there was a communication lapse or a breakup or something like that, do not hesitate to reach out to Randy and I um, or Laura via email and we can get any questions answered. So this will be recorded. And then you obviously have your participation guide and other things that are covering all of these details.
details in more depth as well. So, um, so let's hop into this. Laura talked a little bit about going into apparel um, for the state tournament for boys and girls lacrosse, doing something a little bit different here. Uh, that's kind of a mix between what we do for hockey and some of our other stuff. Um, so this tourney gear here, uh, using these the the URL that's uh, mshslax.signatureconcepts.shop gives your kids, your coaching staff, uh, early access to purchase everything that they want as far as their hoodie and their state tournament t-shirt. So these two things are available for purchase right now using that website and that code that, that is up and live and will be until tomorrow night. Um, I, I, I apologize. I got to check with signature concepts, but I believe it is midnight tomorrow night. That'll shut down. It gives them the opportunity to prepare for delivery. How this is going to work is um, when you use that URL and password, that takes you to a site where you can place your order. Your kids can place their order, pay for their order, do everything there, and they put the team that they are associated with. Those orders will then be fulfilled by signature concepts, and everything will be packed per team and delivered to the site that you're playing your first round game at, whether it be Stillwater or White Bear Lake. So I'll use Eastridge, for example, since they just, they're just they on top of this list here on my computer. Eastridge, um, their girls go in, their coaches go in, they use the URL, they use the password, they put their order in, they pay for it, they, they type in that they are with Eastridge. All of those orders will be put together in one package and delivered to the pass gate. So then when East Ridge's coaches and team uh, and managers check in on Tuesday at White Bear Lake, then they will also be given the box of all of their tournament apparel that they purchased per kid. Uh, and those will be will be dispersed at the time by at that time by the coach. So um, that's how that is going to work. As far as it goes, this is very similar to what we do for hockey, uh, where we were able to put team orders in and then they're delivered the first day of the tournament. OK, so that's how it works for our team gear. And um, and then, Randy, if you could advance, please. And then for the general state tournament apparel, which includes the the tournament hoodie, the tournament T-shirt, and then all of the other merch that uh, that Signature Concept puts out there that has all the um, MSHSL branding on it, everything from teddy bears to joggers and you know uh, you know trophies and and uh, pennants and stuff like that. Those things will all be for sale as well when the tournament starts. So the the normal. Um, online mshsl.signatureconcepts.shop has all of those things and those will be available um, once the tournament starts on Tuesday. And so um, they'll be available online for Tuesday and Thursday's games. And then Signature Concepts will be uh, at Stillwater, the championship site in person and have all of that there um, for your spectators and anyone to purchase um in person on saturday and they'll be there um all day on saturday at stillwater so Phil, um, uh 11 59 uh p.m on sunday night or was nope, it nope 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 um I, I i'll double check on that i believe it is 11 59 on sunday night for your for team. team orders on Great. this slide here we're talking about just your general any any general stuff that anyone wants to purchase i gotcha so i, I, I will Yep, I will double check with with Dave um, just to make sure I didn't get that. Uh, if it was, uh, we've had two different ones for hockey. It's eight p.m. for I, for this one. I believe we're going to go Sunday night because um, because I want you guys to have as much time as you possibly can. All sixteen teams. So um, I will go with eleven fifty nine right now on Sunday night. If it is a change from that, if it's a deviation from that eleven fifty nine, uh, Randy or I will send out a note to all sixteen teams. Okay. Good deal. All right, sweet. Now, the the one thing, Rich, on this one, on this slide here, um, all tournament apparel is available for purchase online. This is even after our game on Saturday, uh, our championship games on Saturday. All merchandise is available to order online um, until basically to the Tuesday following the tournament. So, um, so, you, so if parents are our family member, they run out of something in, in person on Saturday, or they didn't have the money, or they're trying to wait for something else, uh, they will have the opportunity to purchase it until that Tuesday. All right. Randy, let's go ahead and move forward here. Oh, I'm sorry. The last thing on that I did not hit, uh, it is in that slide that everything is cashless. All right. So let your communities know that they are, they are credit or debit card on site there. 
Um, and then obviously the web stuff will be cashless. So, all right, go ahead, Randy. All right, so let's hop into a little bit. Uh, um, I, I put a uh, planning guide or um, uh, participation guide, excuse me. So um, official squad, official squad for lacrosse is the same as it has been. Three coaches, two student managers. Uh, they must be between grades seven and 12. And then you've got your 24 athletes. I just... I put this little star here. This is not just specific to statisticians, but this is any general team personnel that you guys might have. Um, this is a state tournament. This is going to look a little bit different than our regular season or even our section tournament games, guys. So I want to be very clear because there have been some questions. There's been some uh, concern. There's been some different uh, points that have been brought to me about things that have or have not happened in the past. The official squad is the squad that is allowed on the playing surface. That is three coaches, two student managers, and your 24 student athletes. Can one of your three coaches be a st statistician for you as well? Of course they can. But three coaches, your two student managers, and your 24 student athletes. Those are the people that will be allowed through the pass gate and on the field during the competition. Okay. Now, in the past, there has been additional coaches that were allowed to be on the field during warm-up just so you can take care of that duty of the extra roles that are needed during warm-up. That is still allowed. That is still allowed. So that will be just fine. Um, but during, during team introductions, those additional coaches will need to leave the field and they will not be allowed back. Okay, so you'll have your extra manpower during your warmups for your extra drills or any things that your your coaches normally did for you during the season when there was an unlimited amount of uh, uh, access to the playing surface. So you have all that in your in your warm up time, right? Obviously in your side field and your fifteen that you get before your game. Um, but once that once our introduction starts, those additional coaches need to go into the spectator area. Okay. Um, and again, that's not just, I just use statistician as an example here, but if you had another coach that's their specific job to bring people water or whatever it is, right? Three coaches on your official roster, two student managers, and then your 24 athletes. Randy, let's go ahead and move. Bill, can we- yes, sir, uh, Jim, go can ahead. Can just clarify that? When you say that uh, additional coaches are not back, that means at halftime, uh, also, so once they're off the field, they're off the field. That is correct. Once we get past our warmups, those coaches now move into the spectator area, which is the bleachers at both sites, um, and and they will be there for the remainder of the game. Thanks, Jim, for that. Appreciate it. Phil, question about that extra coach: They wouldn't be on our admittance form, so how do they gain access? Do they need a ticket to get in, or how no, do they get in? Correct. Yep, they will. So. So when I mentioned the pass gate, uh, and I'll show you where the pass gate for, especially for teams or ADs that maybe haven't been here before, I, I will show on the logistics aspect of this presentation, the, the pass gate areas, those, if there's a team, a coach that's not on the pass gate, yes, they will be required to purchase a ticket and come in. Um, and then uh, if they can, when they come over to the field, they'll be able to gain access by letting the security know that they are a coach. Okay. So, so they'll just go in there and how I did it when I was in, uh, an AD at, at CDH and we had girls across go as an AD, I just purchased that ticket for my additional coaches because they weren't included in the pass list on the official roster. So you guys, your school district can handle that in any way in which they want to do that. Um, but they, they will not be admitted through the pass gate with the official roster. Does that help Sarah? Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, Jim, thanks for bringing that up. Let's go ahead and move, Randy. All right. Um, your tournament admittance form here. Um, just wanted to share it with everyone just so they get an idea on it. Um, we want we want a uh, phonetic spelling or a, you know, to help with pronunciation. This is just an example of that for you. Just so everyone can get eyes on it. Go ahead, Randy. Oh, and I apologize. Do this. This is due by tomorrow at 8 p.m. So Rich, this might be where I was getting caught up between my eight o'clock and my midnight with, uh, with yeah. signature concepts. But and Phil, it's 8 a.m. 8 a.m., 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. <laughs> All right. So participation guide. I am not gonna go through the entire participation guide or we wouldn't do this seating until like 11.30. So there's a couple of different things that I'm gonna hit on, uh, but I am gonna, re I'm, I'm gonna throw this out there. A lot of times, um, 
whether it be from an AD standpoint or from a spring sports coach standpoint, a lot of our spring coaches, just because they're out of the building and they're kind of out of loop sometimes with some of the stuff that's going on, they're not as active on their MSHSL site, their, their, old, their dashboard, right. or coaches clipboard, things along those lines. And so um, your participation guide uh, that was emailed out also is on there underneath state tournament resources. Hop into that. That has more details on all of these bullet points that I'm just going to kind of run through here uh, quickly, just so they're points of emphasis in this meeting, and then we can go back if we need to. But there's more depth in all of these in your 2023 Boys and Girls Lacrosse State Tournament Participating Schools uh, Guide. All right. So first thing here we're going to hit on real quick is our suspended game and weather um, policy. So our quarter... Our championship round, so quarterfinals, semifinals, and championship games uh, will be played to a completion. And then the the one caveat that's a little bit different is our consolation and third place. And so the rule in uh, girls is 80%. Uh, if 80% of the game has been completed and it's not tied um, at the time of the point of suspension, then that game is final. And boys, it's three quarters. So 75% in boys, 80% in girls. If something comes up where that game is needed to be suspended for weather, lightning, power outage, whatever it is, and the consolation rounds, not the championship rounds, uh, if 80% in the girls or 75% in the boys is completed and that game is not tied, that game will be uh, considered final. Okay. So little difference there. On the uh, on the suspended weather aspect. Now I'm praying to God that we don't have any need for our suspended weather uh, or game policy, but I just wanted to make sure that was clarified as a point of emphasis. Um, both of our locations have an adjacent field uh, that will be available for teams to warm up um, for the first game of the day. There'll be 45 minutes on the clock, uh, and every other game after that. Um, Muck and Hearn or our site manager at Stillwater will be either Randy or I to control field flow. Um, their team will get your 15 minutes on the actual playing field uh, for your warm up, but you've got that ad additional time before that on those adjacent fields at White Bear and at Stillwater. Okay. Um, introduction. Um, this is, I've gotten some, some feedback from a couple of different areas, some positive, some negative, but again, as I mentioned earlier in the meeting, this is a state tournament. It is going to look and feel a little different in some aspects than what you experience during your regular season and your section tournament play. And so um, I want to make sure here, while I've got every AD and every coach on this call, I want to encourage you to have your student athletes participate in the introductions, right? There's different philosophies on different things. Um on you know calling individuals or just staying as a team huddle during that this is a state tournament i want to be able to put our best foot forward for our parents for our communities and obviously for the sport of lacrosse i need you guys to to put your best foot forward in getting your teams to participate in our introductions okay visiting team will be introduced first um and it will be numerical they'll come out to the hash that's closest to your sideline and then turn and face the press box once they've been introduced. There's no handshaking. There's no no craziness. It's just simply introducing a name, coming out to the hash, turning and facing the press box, um, and maybe give a wave or whatever floats your boat on that front. The visiting team will go first. Then the home team will be second. And then the officials will get introduced. They'll play the national anthem. There'll be one national anthem played per day at each site, one national anthem played per day at each site. And then we'll get it on. The we'll game will get started. Okay. So again, I just want to go ahead and make sure that I'm making this a point of emphasis as well, because I've heard in the past, there's some teams that won't come out for introduction, some teams that will, and it just looks like a bad production with that happening. And so again, if we're going to try and grow the sport of lacrosse, grow the credibility of lacrosse, do all these different things. When we get to opportunities where we've got a venue that's different, that's bigger, that's a bigger stage and more influence and more impact, I want to make sure that all of us, all of our programs, the sport of lacrosse and the MSHS cell is looking as good as possible when it comes to our presentation and the introductions is a piece of that jim is there anything that you wanted to add on that before i move forward uh nope i think you covered it well thank you beautiful thank you sir all right randy let's go ahead and kick all right 
So general reminders, uh, uniform sportsmanship and hydration. Last year I had to I work backwards on these. I had the, the pleasure of being around on like a 109 degree, degree day for my first day of the tournament. Uh, so I want to make sure that we're harping on hydration. We will have ice and cold towels and all that stuff there, but make sure that you're talking with your kids about having their water bottles, staying hydrated. And that's a big, a big piece of that is hydrating on Monday, making sure that your kids got electrolytes and water in them on Monday so that it's not an issue on Tuesday. Tuesday. So that day prior, obviously I'm preaching to the choir here, talking to coaches and ADs, but make sure we're harping on that um, regardless of the, of the potential weather conditions, but make sure we're on it so that we can avoid issues. Last year at Stillwater, we actually had an ice bath behind the scores table. I'm working on making sure that that happens again, depending upon weather conditions. I mean, if it's 75 degrees and cool outside, I'm probably not going to stress the trainer with that, but that's another option that we can do um, to make sure that we're protecting our kids from heat illness. All right. Uh, kicking up here to, uh, I'll just go to uniforms just because they'll be quick. If there's issues, talk to your kids about uniforms, make sure they're in uniforms. If there's an issue with uniforms, yours or another teams, make sure you're talking to the officials before the start of the contest. Once the game gets going, um, the officials are most likely not going to start dealing with uniform issues unless it's a, a uniform and a safety issue. So make sure you're, con you're communicating with those officials prior to the start of the contest. All right. Lastly, two things on sportsmanship. One, uh, sportsmanship of our players. Again, talking about furthering the sport of lacrosse, advancing it, making sure that we're doing a good job of being stewards to it. Make sure we're talking with our kids about this is a bigger stage. This is technically the biggest stage in the state of Minnesota that these kids can play on uh, for high school lacrosse. And so everything that is being watched with a microscope um, from everyone, from the communities, from kid, from parents that are bringing their kids there to learn about lacrosse, to watch, that don't even have a horse in the race. They just love the idea of having their kid playing in a state tournament someday. So make sure we're having those conversations with our student athletes that we are putting our best foot forward. We're not acting in ways that wouldn't be condoned by our school districts, our coaches, and certainly not the Minnesota State High School League. So let's have, please have those conversations. And I, me as tournament director at my site, and I know Muck will do it at his site, White Bear, um, as those kids are coming in, I generally give a talk to you uh, as coaches and and players on your bus before we take you to the check-in table at the pass gate uh and i will hit on some of those things personally but i really need you know mom and dad head coach you know the the parents of the program to get in there and 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 say those things so that i am just reinforcing what ad and coach of the program is saying so let's make sure that we're talking with our kids about putting our best foot forward as far as sportsmanship Com compete i want it i want hard fought games i want these games to be com competitive and and tough games but i also want um them to be within the realm of good sportsmanship i have no problem with someone getting blasted and and it being a tough play but help the guy up and go do it again. Help the young lady up and the girls games guys in a little different, but help them up. Make sure we're being good sportsmen um, in the process of that. Okay. So that's on the team side of thing. The second aspect of it is on the, the spectator side of things, right? Let's make sure that our, our athletic directors, our athletic, our, excuse me, our school administrators that are there in observation and support of our student sections, of our parents, of all those things are encouraging that positive that positive sportsmanship and that positive experience as well. Um, that that's going to be a big piece, and I'll I'll hop into that a little bit later uh, with um, your your four comp tickets and and all that stuff. But but please, as athletic administrators, even as coaches, at times, if you're out there and someone's acting in a way that you know is not helping us advance lacrosse, helping your school district and your in your team win a game, please be vocal and speak up right? That's not just your right as a coach and as a leader in your school and, and in the state of Minnesota um, in terms of lacrosse, but it's part of your duty. Right? If someone's not, not condoning themselves in a way that's lining up with, with good sportsmanship and, and how we'd want our schools to be represented, please speak up and say something. And if you're not comfortable speaking up and saying something, come and find me because I certainly will. All right. So let's make sure that we're, we're taking care of that on the side of things. Um, all tournament team, we'll keep pushing forward here, is pretty self-explanatory. Just coaches, be prepared to have your kids um, be there for that, right? Um, whether you're in a consolation uh, side of the bracket at that point or if you're, if you're um, 
uh, if you're playing in a, in the championship stuff, have those kids ready and prepared to be presented their awards at all tournament team. And then lastly, on the all tournament team piece, your student athlete needs to be in good standing to be considered for all tournament team. So if there is some shady doings as far as going back to sportsmanship or conduct, uh, if there's anything funky there, um, they will not be considered for all tournament team if they are not in good standing. Okay. Um, um, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, they, they should be in uniform also. We had kids show up in street clothes. They should have their, their game jersey on. Sweet. Thank you for that reminder. So for all tournament team, make sure that uh, that uh, your young young men and young women have their jersey with them for the all tournament team award ceremony and the picture that is to follow. OK, um, thank you, Jim. Uh, as far as our general awards after. Um, let me hold on a second and pull my notes. I apologize. Well, you're pulling your notes. Um, I'll go back to the uniforms, too. Uh, the injured players on the sideline should have their game jersey on also um, and not be in street clothes. Well, they, you know, they can have pants or shorts on, but they should have their game jersey so we can identify who they are, if they're part of the team or not. Correct. And they will have to be, they would have to be part of that 24 person official roster. Correct. With them there. Okay. Now going back to the awards piece. So medals will be awarded to all members of first, second, and third place teams. Uh, that will be to the head coaches, to the two assist, the head coach, assistant coaches, uh, your two trainers, and your obviously the team, the team's roster. Okay. Trophies will go to second, third, fourth consolation teams um, as well. And then during the trophy presentation, we've got board members. Um, along with myself and and Muck that will be there to assist putting the awards, the, the medals on your student athletes when they are called, okay? And the PAs will do that. Um, concessions are available at both sites. Uh, Laura talked a little bit about during, and during the uh, state tournament, or excuse me, during our website talk on the state tournament resources. Um, we have those programs are all digital and can be simply clicked on and had on a phone, which are great. Um, and then just a reminder here on reviewing your participation guide, which I've mentioned multiple times, that participating school information guide is huge. That will answer about 99% of your questions so you don't have to wait for an email, text, or phone call response from Randy, myself, or Jim Muckenhart. Okay, let's go ahead, Randy. All right, as we're starting to wrap up here, um, Laura talked about the four comp tickets. The purpose of those comp tickets are to go to um, school administrators or people that are going to be in a supervisory role for your community during these contests. So we want to make sure that um, we want to make sure that we've got eyes there. You have personal connections. You know your people. You know your kids a lot better than us or the hired security that we have at both of those sites. And so a lot of situations, a lot of things could be diffused just from you know, Mr. Athletic Director, Mrs. Athletic Director, Principal AD that knows a kid or knows a parent having a word or even a look in some cases. So let's make sure that we're doing our part and making sure that we're taking care of our spectator conduct. Uh, this is part of the bylaws of the MSHSL is, is, is the responsibility for our spectator conduct during postseason competitions. And so if there are any questions or anything with that, don't hesitate to reach out to me, but let's make sure that we're doing that. And then the, the other piece of that is making sure that we're keeping kids um, and parents off the field, especially after that championship game. Um, we just don't want them to storm the field because that takes away the opportunity for us to do a, a, a full medal ceremony, right? We want to be able to recognize those kids that have worked their rear ends off for four years in some cases to, to win a state championship. We want to be able to recognize them properly. Um, and when we've got, a bum rush of people coming down from the stands to try and get on the field for whatever reason to put a stupid video on TikTok or something like that. Um, that really takes away from the experience, the state tournament experience for those for those kids that just won a state tournament. And then it also puts us in a tough spot because we also have a team that just lost a state tournament and trying to figure out how to deal with that 
all within five minutes or so of having to accept a second place award. And they've got people celebrating and screaming in their face. That's that's a very challenging situation to navigate. And so I am I'm not just saying, hey, this is bylaw. I'm also personally asking for your help as athletic administrators and making sure that you're getting people there from your school that can help aid in this process and making it good and positive for both teams, the winning and the losing. Because um, we got to take that into consideration, gang. All right. All right. Lastly, I said I was going to hit on some logistical aspects of both of these locations. Now, I've got to believe that most of you have been to Stillwater or have been to White Bear Lakes South Campus. Um, but if you look here, uh, we'll look at the picture on the left first. That's Stillwater. And the star that's uh, just kind of in the center of the, of the image there is where our pass gate is. Now, how do you access that pass gate? Your bus driver, your coach, your head coach, you want to know this so you can tell your bus driver. Um, so Highway 36 is uh, just to the top of that picture, and you'll be coming in. And if you look to the right, there's kind of that gray loop that comes around. That is that east driveway that goes to the south parking lot. That's where those buses can park. That's where I will meet you. And that's where um, I will have a few words with your team before we take you over to the pass gate, which is that yellow star. So that pass gate's right there. We'll check in there. You'll receive your apparel on the first day for your kids and coaches if you ordered any. And then we'll escort you to your locker rooms for you to be able to change, get ready to rock and roll and go from there. The buses can stay parked back in that area while you are playing. Um, and then your warm-up fields are just to the bottom of that star there. And then the playing surface, the actual game field, is to the bottom left of that star. That's still water. The one thing I want to tell all of you, ADs and coaches, to make sure you're telling your spectators, your fans, your community, is if anyone wants to park back there, that's not a good place to park because they've got to then walk all the way back around the entire building to those big parking lots where the spectator entrances are to the uh, Pony Stadium, I think is what its official's name is. Ricky, I'm sorry if I butchered that. But um, so the, the entrance for spectators is not there and they're gonna wanna park in those regular student lots there that are just to the North and the West on their campus, okay? So that's the Stillwater site. Phil, can I um, add a couple of things? Go ahead, Rick. Um, teams, when you park in the back, you'll also have access to the practice fields and to the locker room. So that's going to be a much easier travel for your teams. So make sure that your bus driver knows that's where you got to go. You're going to swing around the back on the east side of the school, and then you'll park in that south parking lot. And as Ricky said, they've made it very convenient for us. Literally, everything's within... 20, 20 yards of you. The pass gates right there, the locker rooms right there, the warm-up fields right there, the playing fields right there. You don't have to go anywhere. It's a great setup. So uh, that's solid there. Okay. Uh, if we move over in the right part of this image is is White Bear Lake South Campus. And the field's kind of cut off there just so we could see the entrance on McKnight there. But that yellow star is the northeast corner of their actual lot there. And this is where buses will be able to park. Your teams will unload. Uh, Coach Muck and Hearn will hop on that bus and talk to your guys, guys and girls there. And then you will enter and check in that pass gate. Again, very similar to the situation with Stillwater is you want to make sure that you don't have any spectators parking there because there's no access to get into the spectator entry area. You're going to want, and it's not pictured, it's not it's not shown in this image, but you're going to want to make sure your spectators, your community, your fans are parking in the lot that's south of the, the South Campus school building there that's pictured. And then the entry for spectators is on the southeast side of the, of the facility there. But the teams... Officials, everyone's going to park in that north lot, and buses will be able to park there and stay uh, during the duration of the game. Adrian, anything that you got for folks coming to White Bear? Uh, no, you just hit on the points that I, that I wanted to make sure we all knew. Beautiful. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Okay. So that's the logistics aspect of uh, both of our sites, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open it up for my staff here to answer any questions or hit on anything that I may not have uh, touched on uh, before we get into our uh, actual seating and talk about the bracket and the schedule. Uh, anyone from Laura, Jim, Randy, Randy, you're the one that usually catches me that yeah. I'm yeah. got? Um, Phil, I got, can you talk about our tents and if teams are allowed to bring tents or if we're using onsite tents, we had a couple questions come in the chat about tents. Very cool. um, yeah. 
And Dave is closing it on Sunday for Team Apparel at midnight. At midnight on Sunday, gang. Thanks, Randy, for checking with him. Um, so as far as tents go, we've been blessed to be able to have tents at all of our sites. So um, in, in the sake of making sure that all teams have access to the same type of conditions during the contest, we've got tents at Stillwater. We've got tents at White Bear. Okay. In the event where we need to use a tent for whatever reason, we'll be able to provide a tent for each team and a tent. we'll have a tent over our scores table where they'll do their checking in and stuff like that. Okay. So um, there is not a need for a team to bring a tent. If you'd like to bring it as a backup, that's fine. But we've got a tent for each bench. We've got a tent for the scores table at each one of our sites so that we can keep it a relatively the same opportunity for all of our participating schools. Randy, thanks for bringing that up. Anything else in the chat that we, we need to hit? Good deal. Good deal. Muck, anything you got? Uh, no, I think we've covered it all. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to hop into this. I'm going to say uh, congratulations one more time. And then we will start with introducing the pairings for the 2023 Girls Lacrosse State Tournament that starts their day at their tournament at White Bear Lake Area High School. In girls, we've got the number five seed playing the number four seed. Number five seed is Benilde St. Margaret. Number four seed is Chanhassen. So we've got Benilde. Number five, Chan Hassan, number four. Our number three seed, Stillwater, will be playing random draw East Ridge. Number three seed, Stillwater, will be playing random draw East Ridge. Our number two seed, Edina, will be playing random draw Chaplin Park. So number two, Edina playing random draw, Chaplin Park. And that leaves us with our number one seed, Lakeville South, playing random draw, Elk River, Zimmerman. So number one seed, Lakeville South, playing random draw, Elk River, Zimmerman. So that's our girls bracket there, starting at White Bear Lake Area High School. And I'd like to, like to just throw out in this meeting as well for all you coaches and ADs, we had a representative from the Coaches Association uh, come and do our random draws with us yesterday. Sarah, um, I apologize. Randy, last name, Blake's coach. I have it here. Randy, what was the young woman's last name? It's Sarah Roth. Is wow, the, thank like, you. Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. All right. So Sarah came to the league offices yesterday and did our draws for us um, for both boys and girls. So, um, all right, here we go. Let's hop into the boys side of things. We've got our number five seed, Matamidi, playing our number four seed, Prior Lake. Boys tournament starts at Stillwater High School. Number five seed, Matamidi, playing number four seed, Prior Lake. We've got our number three seed, Shakopee, playing random draw Chisago. That's number three seed Shakipi playing a random draw Chisago. We've got our number two seed Lakeville North playing random draw Creighton Durham Hall. That's our number two seed Lakeville North playing random draw Creighton Durham Hall. And then we've got our number one seed Benilde St. Margaret BSM playing random draw Moorhead. We've got our number one seed Benilde playing random draw Moorhead. And again, boys games start at Stillwater. Girls games start at White Bear Lake. All right. So with that, gang, Randy, if you want to go back to our, go to that last slide, congratulations again. We want you to enjoy your state tournament's experience, but I also need to say that this is a collective effort. This is a collective effort between the MSHSL, your member schools, and your programs uh, as boys and girls lacrosse programs. So um, we're excited to host this tournament. We're excited to get it going. We want to have a tough tournament um, and have an awesome time. If there are any questions, one, reference this recording. Two, reference your participation guide. Um, and three, if you need it, please reach out to Laura, Randy, or myself, and we'll get you an answer ASAP. Again, thank you for your time this morning. Uh, we're just under an hour here, getting you guys out of here and getting ready to prep 
to prep for your Tuesday games. Uh, I look forward to seeing everyone at both sites and uh, and crowning two state champions on a, a week from today. All right. With that, thank you again for everyone being here. Over and out. Phil, do you know, are the